Meet Phil and Chris, two musicians who write and play music in a band. When recording in the studio, Phil and Chris pay an audio engineer to edit and finalize their recorded music. They listen closely to every detail and ask the engineer to make changes. The results are great, but they have to pay for every minute of studio time they spend reviewing and discussing. Creativity takes time, and time equals money. Phil and Chris were left with a dilemma. Pay a lot of money to get the quality they want, or sacrifice quality for low cost. This choice was unacceptable. So, the musicians innovated. Guys, I love your music, and I also love the fact that you're entrepreneurs. You're the founders of a startup, Audio Common. How did it all come together? My wife and I, we moved to Massachusetts, and shortly thereafter, we found ourselves at a block party. Uh, I had heard there was a drummer on the street. Chris and I met at that block party. Yeah, we started talking. Uh, you know, Phil said he was a musician, singer, songwriter, and uh, you know, he needed someone to play drums on, on a couple of his songs. So he sent me two songs. Those two turned into like 10 or 12 songs. <laughs> Give him uh, a finger, he'll <laughs> take the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I really, really love the music. And, and uh, so we decided to go into the studio and record. So guys, let me understand this a little better. You go into the music studio together and you come out entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? How did it all come together? So after recording our music in the studio, we entered into the mixing phase of the process. And in the mixing phase, that's where you assign individual volumes and effects to each of the multiple tracks that make up the final polished piece of music. So that's the individual tracks that make up a final song. The, the individual bass, drums, guitar, synthesizer, whatever instruments were used in the creation of that song. And this portion of the process is very tedious and typically there's a lot of revisionary work that happens between the studio engineer and the musicians who are actually paying for the studio time as they give comments to the engineer and the I engineer see. produces different mixes. And we found ourselves spending way more time in the studio than we had anticipated and of course spending a lot of time in the studio means you're burning a lot of money as an independent musician you're typically self-funding your projects and what have you. That sounds like a bummer, I gotta say. Exactly, yeah, you're, you're, you're paying every minute you're in the studio, so it's really kind of this, this study and compromise because you wanna spend a lot of time, you know, kind of perfecting your art, but, you know, every minute you're there, you're yeah. spending you're money. On the clock, you're right? On the clock, so. Yeah. Every decision you make is really a compromise. And it's totally, in my eyes, it's totally detrimental to the creative process. The studio should be this great creative atmosphere, and when you're on the clock watching the money just fly out of your pockets, it's really hard to get into that important creative groove. So we really, we identified this process, reviewing mixes and what have you, and, and Chris and I were saying to ourselves, while we were in the studio just kind of blowing this money, saying there, there should be a way to do at least a portion of this process at home, yeah. namely that key review portion of the process. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that, that has to feel terrible if you're a musician, you really care about your music and you feel like, ah, if it's not 100%, I, uh, I would be frustrated, I gotta tell you. Yeah, we figured if we're having this problem, other people are having the same problem. Um, we talked to other musicians, they were running into the same issues that we were. And we figured, uh, you know, I have a programming 
technological background. I'm passionate about music. Phil's passionate about music and he has a business background. So we really have the core that can, you know, take this to the next step and maybe start a company. And it's great. Only a couple years later, we're sitting here not only as bandmates and really close friends, but also as founders of a company called Audio Common.